Hi guys, it's Victoria and welcome back to Femhead. Today, I wanted to make a video about trying to be flexible and productive with the time I have. Because I used to create like a new schedule, routine, a plan of attack, of how I was gonna get everything done. And that would do the trick for several months, if not a year or so, like it wouldn't have to change it that often. But since having Theo, I have found that I have to be much more flexible with my schedule and routine, like almost to the day. And I am someone who thrives off of routine and likes having things laid out before me and like that's how I'm most productive is to set up a schedule, set up a routine and know exactly what I'm doing when. But as you may know, you have to be much more flexible with a baby. I think it's really helpful to set guidelines for yourself and kind of like daily goals, but then tweak it to what works for you that day. And the first thing I wanna say is to let go of the, I need to work eight hours, I need to work the same amount of hours that I did before having Theo because it's just not possible at this point with the current state of everything because I have to care for Theo during the day. He doesn't go to any sort of daycare and we don't have any help right now with coronavirus. I've had to let go of like what once was with how much I could just like sit down and put my nose down my laptop for hours and hours and just bust out work. It just does not work that way anymore. So a while ago, I decided that, okay, his nap time is going to be dedicated work time. And while that like three-ish hours isn't perfect, and I'd love to work more than that, it is a good amount of time to bust through some work. So he went from three naps to two naps around six, seven months. He usually takes two naps a day, usually. But I found that those two naps aren't always enough to get the work done that I need to get done because sometimes he'll take two really great solid almost two hour naps and those days are great and other days he takes you know a really short 30 minute nap in the morning and then skips his afternoon nap so if I'm filming videos like I am now and he's napping I used to like if he would wake up I would just stop and then pick up later when he was taking a second nap um, or the next day but Recently, I have found that since he's a bit more self-sufficient and he can entertain himself and play by himself, I have just started, if I'm like in the middle of filming a video or if I wanna get another one done, I will bring him in here. I will put him over in this corner with like a couple toys or stuff to play with and I'll just let him play and let go of the fact that people might be able to hear him making noises in the background and just get the videos filmed. And then if I'm filming a vlog style or it's not a sit down video, I guess, I will usually film those when he's awake and just, you know, he's on the kitchen floor playing in the corner while I reorganize the pantry. I also do any like cleaning or household tasks while he's awake and I let him help, we'll say. If I'm unloading our dishwasher, he likes to pull himself on, up on the side on that bottom rack and like wiggle around dishes. He's not strong enough to pick them up yet, which is good because he could break them, but I make sure to get like the knives and sharp stuff out of his reach. I think it's good to have him, even though he can't help and he doesn't understand that at the point, to be a part of it at this stage. And then when he gets older, he can help out with chores. He has a sixth sense for when I get my laptop out. So if he's like playing content and happy by himself in the corner of the living room, um, I will try to pull my laptop out and you know answer a couple emails, get a little editing done, write the notes for the next video. But he knows he could be on the other side of the couch, but as soon as I get that laptop out, he crawls around and all of a sudden that's when he needs me. I don't know what that is, <laughs> but I you know give him a little bit of attention, but then I also want to make it to where like, okay buddy, you can play by yourself, I'm not ignoring you. Like I'm here, but I'm trying to do stuff. That way in the future I can work and do my own things while he is content and playing. So I don't know what that is where he's like, no, I know you're working, <laughs> I need you now. One of my biggest pieces of advice if you have a kid and especially if they're home while you're working, like I know so many stay-at-home moms that have businesses on the side that they run while taking care of their kids and it's hard work, man. Teach your kid, let them learn how to play by themselves and to entertain themselves. I know it seems complicated and maybe mean, but it's such a beneficial thing. Like now that Theo is able to play by himself and entertain himself, it is such a great thing. Like he can't always do it. And sometimes he's like, no, all of a sudden I don't want to do that. And I want you and I need you to entertain me. But more and more, I try to just let him sit there 
and crawl around. It's okay if he makes a mess, but to just let him entertain himself. I would say, especially once he was able to kind of scoot and crawl around, that's when he really started being able to play by himself. He has his little corner in the living room where his toys are. And then if we're in the kitchen, he loves currently to play with like wooden spoons, a strainer, or cycling. Like he's kind of going through a, I don't want to play with toys. I want to play with like random household things. So I just let him do that. Ask yourself, when are you most productive? I've always been most productive in the mornings. Like if I can get up early and crack on with work, like that is a time for me to shine. Theo wakes up between 7 and 7.30 and then goes down purse for a snap between 10 and 10.30 and sleeps for usually like an hour 15, hour and a half. What I've really started to try to do in the past couple of days is to wake up before him. So I've set my alarm for six. For the longest time, I was like, I'm just tired, especially when he was waking up in the night. I'm just gonna wake up when you wake up. But now I'm like, okay, I feel rested enough to where I can wake up before you. And it is nice, like even if I don't get a time done, it's nice to just have time to myself before he wakes up for the day. There were a few nights a couple months ago where I tried to work after he went to bed and I had like a really productive like 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. little work stint, but then I could not fall asleep that night. And so I found that I can't work past a certain point because my mind can't slow down in time for bed. I love to-do lists, I love setting goals. And I think it's really beneficial to set out your goals or to do items that morning before you start work. Take a moment when you first get down there and think through everything you need to get done and write it out. I have a notebook where I'll just write like a list each day of the things I need to do or I'll have kind of a weekly list that I'll just add to. And anytime anything comes to mind, I'll just write it on that list and I'll prioritize it by what's most important and what needs to get done first. But I find that being able to take to do is out of my head and put them on a paper allows me to focus better and therefore be more productive. Even more now than before, I like to bulk produce content. Like it's the only way stuff gets done. <laughs> Instead of just sitting down and filming one video and then editing it and then posting it, I will try to do at least two videos at a time up to four. I think the most I've done is like five or six videos at once. It makes the most sense to, you know, one day to focus on getting all the video notes done for like four videos. And then the next day during his naps, I will get ready, do my hair, put some makeup on, and I will just bust through videos. And that just allows me to be most efficient with my time because if every day I'm spending the time getting ready for a video, like it doesn't take that long. It's probably 10 or 15 minutes, but that's 10 or 15 minutes. I don't have that many pockets <laughs> in my day now. Now. Cut out the time wasters. We're all guilty of this, but really looking at where you're wasting your time is very important. Early on with Theo, before I had a good schedule going and a work-life balance, I would like clean during his naps, I would do laundry during his naps, I would shower during his naps, and like those are all things that I can do while he's awake. And so I very quickly learned like, okay, these are things that are best done while he's napping and these are things that I can do while he's awake. Most days I do a quick scan through emails, but you can just get lost in emails and spend so much time in your inbox. And so I have designated days. I'm pretty sure it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday that I'll actually take the time to respond to and answer emails. But other than that, like I'll just look at it real quick to see if there's anything pressing that I need to get back to right away. And if it can wait till the next day, then I will leave it until the next day. The same goes with social media. I have not been the greatest with social media lately. Like. Pfft. It's fine, especially if social media is part of your job, you can get lost on Instagram, scrolling and responding and commenting. I find that I need to plan it out. I try not to get on Instagram during my nap work time. I leave that for filming and editing usually. At other points throughout the day, I respond to Instagram messages and all that. I'll post a photo or a story, but I try not to get sucked into responding to stuff during my precious nap time. <laughs> if you work from home, I feel like it's very helpful to have designated work times and to respect that and to keep work and home separate. Especially when you're starting off, like you can just wanna work all hours and you're super excited and you can work through the night. And like, granted there are times where you have to work longer hours, but regardless how short or long they are, like choose your work hours and then stick to them. Especially right now, not having as much time as I would like to dedicate to work. I have my work hours and I try to say, okay, I'm gonna get up an hour before him, I'm gonna work. And then during his two naps, I'm gonna work and then try not to feel guilty 
while he's awake and I'm spending time with him and I'm doing household things like let go of that work guilt and if there is stuff that I can do while he's content and playing by playing by himself then I will if you find yourself constantly cleaning certain areas of your home how can you declutter those areas or set up systems to be more efficient I find my two areas that I feel like constantly are dirty is the living room and kitchen but I really try to just clean them once a day usually that's later in the day so we can wake up to a clean kitchen and clean living room i start a load of dishes before bed and unload them in the morning that way we can just put our dirty dishes straight into the dishwasher and that cuts down on so much of the like sink counter mess that's been one big change i try to clean as i cook or if I'm like warming something up for lunch to kind of take that time to put any random dishes in the dishwasher or you know clean some bottles or anything like that. Try to put things back as you use them. So when you get done at the end of the day and you're changing into your pajamas, instead of just throwing your clothes onto the floor, put the dirty ones in the hamper and then hang up or fold the clean ones. Jeans, for example or leggings, like I don't wash that stuff every day unless it's super dirty or stinks, just put it back for some other time. One thing that I find that's really helpful is to use the stairs. Let me explain. So we have a set of stairs that goes between the main floor and the top floor and then we have basement stairs. So at the top of the basement stairs I have a little hamper and anytime we have any like dish rags or towels from the kitchen like we go through a lot of those with you know messes with Theo, him spinning up, cleaning the kitchen, anything like that we'll just put the dirty towels in there and I find that's very helpful and then anytime we're taking you know a load of diapers or laundry downstairs to be done I will just grab whatever is in that hamper and put it into that load and then between the main floor and the upstairs if there's anything that needs to go upstairs like socks or sweatshirts or like random clothes or whatever it might be i'll just put up at the bottom of the stairs and then usually when i go up the stairs i'll grab something and take it upstairs or i'll just do it all at once depending on whether i'm like doing a quick tidy or not and then if you even if you're not going to do a full-on clean trying to get items into the room where they belong i find is very helpful say the living room is where you spend most of your time you can have things from the bedroom, from the bathroom, from the kitchen, all end up in that room. And I find that just putting them into the room that they need to go in, if you have a few minutes while you're like brushing your teeth, you can put stuff away. Or while you're warming up your lunch, you can put stuff away in the kitchen. And I find that just really helps. So that's what I have right now. I'm just really trying to set up systems and a flexible schedule routine situation so I can be most productive and just accepting where I'm at right now with life, focusing on the most important things that need to get done and just giving myself some grace because I'm definitely not perfect right now. There's so many other things I would like to be doing that I just don't have time for and that's okay. Let me know down below if you guys have any tips or tricks to be productive and to get stuff done. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.